realigning the educational system for global relevance. Nelson Mandela once said, and I quote, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Now, is our current educational system ensuring the right education for our children and preparing them for the future? Recently, I had a conversation with a little girl and she told me that she was taught about the tribe that is associated with the usage of different perfumes in Nigeria. <laughs> then I went through her books and I saw that in one of her subjects, she was also taught that it is the duty of the mother to cook and clean and the duty of the father to provide. I became disappointed and disgusted at such level of parochialism in our educational curriculum. School curriculum ought to evolve continually and should be in tandem with understanding issues of local and global concern. This will enable our children to grow with the right kind of mindsets, relevant skills, knowledge to challenge the status quo and change the world. For educational system or curriculum to be relevant for a fast evolving world, where globalization is at the center and fostered by technology, the following should be considered by relevant authorities while planning for the educational system. Appreciating globalization. Exposure to global issues ranging from learning about history, culture, and contemporary issues. Understanding technology. We are now in the era of connectivity, metaverse, virtual reality, automation, and robotics. Skill acquisition. Soft skills like enhancing cognitive ability, effective communication, empathy, and enforcing positive values. Fostering creativity. Children should be guided to discover their potentials. Innovation and intelligence should be refined. Education is beyond schooling, but we must ensure that our schools should be the right environment where our children can get quality education. So let's discuss your thoughts. You're talking primary and secondary school. Yes, primary yeah. specifically. Yeah. So, um, hmm. well, the fact that we don't teach history is a problem. So I think it also starts with that, is that we need to know who we are, who we were, to know where we're going. We need to know ourselves and then place ourselves into the context of the modern world. Um, and so we have an issue of the identity right off the bat. We need to completely change our educational system. I'm sure everybody here will agree, agree. with me. It's absolute outdated. nonsense. It's outdated. And what really taught a lot of parents that is when we were on lockdown in COVID and we're all teaching our own children. <laughs> and I totally revamped their curriculum and understood that, look, it's not all about open book, learn this, learn this. They had to learn how to take care of themselves. They had to learn how to cook and clean, and not just the girls, the boys. True. They had to learn to garden, to plant things, to clean, to imagine, to draw. It doesn't, it's not about your skill. It's not about the ability at that point. It's about exposing children to all the things of life and allowing them to find their direction within a framework, of course. And we in Nigeria, we have a tend to just say, you will do this, you will do that, girl does this, boy does that. And not realizing that we're shortchanging our entire society in the long run, in our future. Because what you segment or partition what one child in and put another in is what you're doing for an entire future and a nation. And we need to think in larger terms when we're thinking about the education of our, of our, of our children. But I can go on and on because I have special needs child and that's <laughs> yeah. another yeah. subject. Yeah, that's another well, the, thing is, the thing is, shortly before I get to Juliet, <laughs> I can feel your pain now. Look at this issue. You teach your child the right thing. You are trying to teach your children to learn about how to take, be responsible. And then when they get back to school, imagine this curriculum where they have to tell them that the father's job is just to provide and the mother is to cook and clean. And then they come back to tell you that this particular tribe, I won't mention the name, they are used to using different perfume. How has that got to do with mm -hmm. the reality on ground? And then they're messing with your children's mind. So curriculum, our curriculum should be devoid of sentiment on tribal or gender sentiment. So your thoughts, how do you think we can carry along young people? Because they need to grow these children, they need to learn skills from small. How to so, build themselves? So firstly, with the, since you're say, asking these questions, the, my first answer is the home is the primary educator mm -hmm. of the child. So that's what I'll say for that. But, but let's look at the educational system as a whole. You see, I think the main 
work should be done by the ministry. This is me. Yeah. Because before now, we went to sleep when we saw that there was a huge value, there was huge value, huge, huge improvement in the private sector. So we all focused and put our children in the private, private sector school, and yeah. the government sector suffered. So maybe the ministry was not governing the private sector, apart from when they get given licenses and, this, and the likes. But now, like Tonya said, with the COVID, we saw that the entire system locally is crap. So now it's, it's biting everybody. It's really biting people. So the ministry has to have like a bl blueprint. They have to like have a, an agenda, like a goal. What do they want for, what kind of end game do they want for our children? What do they want our children to know, to like, to do at the end, I mean, while passing through mm -hmm. the educational system? Mm -hmm. And create that curriculum that will sink that. It has to be done at a national level because now mm. the entire system is it's messed broken, up. Man. And people are thinking of sending their children abroad now at a very young age because we're waiting for university and masters mm -hmm. before. Mm. Now people are doing mm. secondary school at yeah. grade nine. People are thinking of sending their kids abroad because they're structured. Their curriculum is in sync with the time because they're doing researches, time, yeah. they, are, they are implementing. Mm -hmm. And we are just there with the same textbooks we it's use. I'm still 19, doing computer 55. sciences using book, using binary code. You see some computer tests, but like this is what I used like 20 years ago. And so we're not even involving. I think the sector, the ministry. The ministry but is there even the will to involve? Is the will there? Because you bring up that, that point about the, the private sector, the private schools. Everybody sends uh, their children to private school, whether it's the low one or the <laughs> high one, because unless you have any choice, Unless you don't have any choice, you, 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 you will send your child to private school. Otherwise, you're forced to send your child to government school. And I don't really know what value government school is giving, apart from maybe they're getting the free meal for the child for the day, <laughs> if that is still in effect. <laughs> so it's, it's so messed up and it's so frustrating. And just on top of the kegs of powder kegs of explosives that we're just putting on top to explode this country, this is a major one because this is the foundational years. Yeah, and is. these are the important years. And these are the impressive years. And children eventually will wake up to the fact that what they're learning is nonsense. That why should they even bother? Mm -hmm. That Sha is just to do yahoo yahoo, or they'll just let me school just learn cryptocurrency co and start uh, trading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And school is a scam. And to be honest, <laughs> university is a scam, in my opinion. Okay. But we're not, we're just talking about <laughs> primary, primary and secondary school. Well, Victor, what is this of the. Victor, you have to speak now. So, I mean, I've got two things to say. First, um, I think that what we have consciously or subconsciously trained. Um, to become from cradle, you know, is to be literate and not to be educated. Mm -hmm. So you can know stuff and you are not educated. How many first class really, you know, that we produce every day are really educated? Mm -hmm. Education changes you as a person. You're able to use that knowledge and apply it. I love the fact that Tonya said she's able to take her, you know, her children on creative thinking, imagination, doing stuff and all of those things. Well, someone made a joke. I mean, I've been learning X, Y, X, D, Y, D, X. I came into, the, into life and life was not asking me X, Y, you know, find X and find Y. I wasn't looking for X. I was looking for money. But nobody taught me financial intelligence. And I was learning X plus Y equals to O. And life doesn't care about that, right? So I, secondly, I believe, um, like Juliet said, the, the, where your heart, where your treasure is, is where your heart will be. And where your heart is, is where your treasure is going to be. Where is the heart, right, mm -hmm. of the, our leaders? Mm -hmm. You know, where is the treasure? Where are they putting the treasure? Where's all the money going into? How much funding goes into education? So like she said, do they really care about education? Yeah. I mean, it's not about, I mean, when it's election, we start eating with young people. That's <laughs> not it's such a, it's such a, it's such a good thing. thing. Like, I, you just, you just nailed it. But there's, there's, something, there's something we've been doing yeah. recently. Like, yeah. um, Wimbis, as some organizations. Wimbis yeah. just did one of the big, sister, mm -hmm. the big Sister program. Okay, we yeah, went to yeah, different yeah, public yeah. schools, but secondary school mm -hmm. children. It was amazing because even though they think the school system is a fraud, but by seeing us, mm -hmm. seeing us that are otherwise successful, I think it gives them that aspiration because it was like some form of mentorship. I, I mean, I really respected the heads of schools who allowed us and went to like about six, con six cities. Six cities. I'm sorry, there was Calabar, there was Port Harcourt, Abuja, Lagos, and somewhere else. And 
they shared over 80 of us to those schools. We went to all the classes. We did some mentoring. It was really, really nice. Maybe we can also do that while we're waiting for the Minister okay. of Education to do that. Thank you very much. Yeah, we can't we can wait for yeah, the yeah, yeah. Minister. I'm going to chip this in. I hope they will listen to us. I remember several times we've been in convocation ceremony where they will say the best student in accounting so, so, get 5,000 or 50,000. And then somebody will do one something not so necessary entertainment and get 10 million naira. I hope you know that the country and the economy will not only be built on entertainment. We need quality education. Indeed, society challenges are never ending. Hence, they need to keep advocating in our private spaces with the hope that it all coalesces into improved humanity existing. Join us again next week on another edition of The Advocate. The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms. On Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To, to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now.